I'm here. I'm here. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be. I'm here, but I'm not here entirely just yet. I have been trying to find the darn gold or artifacts and hunting and hunting and hunting. And I just can't find it, and I didn't want to stop. And Anyway, it's been a bust so far. So I'm back uh, getting ready to do this cargo run. Thank you to Mippy Meat for being the, the latest subscriber. All right. Uh, hope you're having a great day. Yeah, I've been trying to... Um, every 24 hours, a new... Scene switcher turned on. Okay. There we go. Okay. So every 24 hours, a new crash appears somewhere in the world. And if you can get to it within 24 hours, you can recover gold or artifacts. The last one in 24 hours ago was in Libya, and I tried, and I could not find it. So finally, one, it's been weeks, but one has finally spawned in the United States. And up in Montana. And I've got the area located, this crossroads right here, right? This crossroads where the roads meet, and then they've got this distinctive little thing here. A little lake or something. Right? Okay, so I found this. And then I'm looking for this road right here. That makes an X up here. And the crash is supposed to be right there. Or within one mile of this location. And I have been hunting for the last hour. Just... Zooming in and flying around this area right here using the drone, and I can't find it. So bummed out. Well, I'll have to try that today after the live stream, and if I do, I will video record it or take photos or whatever and show it to you. And, uh, that's fine. Okay, so today's flight we are going from. We flew back from Detroit. Back to um, now I can't think of where we dropped off the VIPs yesterday. My brain, I'm still thinking about hunting that uh, hunting the artifact. So we dropped our VIPs off yesterday in. And then we flew over to Detroit, here, and then we're taking off again from, uh, from where we started yesterday, or where we landed yesterday. Now to keep things short today, scarily, it's going to take a while to get to Buffalo and Niagara and see Niagara Falls. Um, up here in the afternoon. So to save time, I just did a straight beeline shot. Unfortunately, this flies us over. It's not too much water. But I don't like flying over water. Close enough to land that yeah, if anything happens. But I just don't I just don't like it. I have an unnatural fear of it. Alright. Get my headphones. The music's not too loud. Okay. Uh, yes. We should probably be starting.
I have it on rock this morning, but if you want to hear something else. Dispatch this morning, welcoming us or anything. Uh, let me turn on the radios and see if that changes. But oh, I'm in the wrong dang plane. I was hunting. Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! Dang it! No wonder. Another day alone. Be here standing. Another soul sucking job will be here standing. Down, down, y'all. Another day with no God will be here standing. Oh, y'all. Another day in New York will be here standing. Another day without you will be here standing. I'll stop you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. We have to get the proper livery or it won't take it. It won't recognize us. I think that uh, I don't dig it, but it makes sense, I guess. You can just stand up now. What a trip. Anyway, again, good morning, afternoon, or evening, where you ever might, wherever you might be. Hey, Sarah Adams, how are you today? Happy Sunday to you. Sorry for the delayed start and uh, you not having my stuff together right away. Are you a pilot or an enthusiast? Do you fly uh, simulators? Flying from LA to high, uh, Hawaii right now. Oh, in you're flying from LA to Hawaii in flight sims. Nice. What are you flying? And my next question is, how long have you been flying? Not that it's, it matters. Build this job and start it over again. I can't load or unload while the engine is running. Okay. Fine. Fine. I'm fine. I'll be comfortable with you as long as you're comfortable with me. Speaking of, you're the VIP on this flight. So pick any seat you want. It's just a cargo run today. Make yourself at home. Put your feet up. Drinks in the back. Some snacks. It's because I went on an exploration. Pilot, stand by. The cargo is being removed. That's all right. There's the job again. Oh, excellent. That is one of my favorite planes. I really enjoy flying the A320 Neo. I picked up the uh, fly wire one. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, it's different. Let's get out of here. 
Thank goodness there's transporter from dispatch. I see you asked for a cargo mission. The ground crew is waiting for you in the parking to load the crates. Yes, yes, load us up, please. We must be on our way. Pilot from dispatch. The cargo door is open and the cargo is being transferred. Well, far out, Captain. Captain Sarah. Hey, please like and subscribe. Not that I want to change Mippy Meat. Uh, what's the word? That's the most recent subscriber, but Captain Sarah would look pretty cool there. Speaking of, let me get over to your okay, Sarah Adams. Pilot, really that's quick. everything. Stowed securely. Let me get over to your channel. We're ready for taxi. And subscribe. There's Sarah Adams' channel. And I am subscribed. Okay, so we're loaded up. Let me get the engine started again. And we will be on our way, folks. Oh, I got the gold fever bug. I really want to. That's the best way I'm going to be able to make money now without all of my pilots. You're good to go. Contact You've never tuned in before. Clearance. You could hire pilots. But you have to pay for an add-on. And during pre-release, uh, pre I had a bunch of pilots. And uh, we made $9,779,000 between me and my pilots. And then they took my pilots away. And I don't want to pay for the upgrade. So, trying to find these treasure, the treasure maps, the treasure stuff, uh, it's my best way to make big, big bucks. All right, let me just get our autopilot set here. You don't have to go up very high at all today. I think it's very flat around here. Three thousand feet should be fine. Say now. All right, let's put that in as a flight level change from the yaw damper bank limiter set now. Yeah, we're all set. Okay. Yo. Well, I got. I see. I'm speaking with Eddie, not Sarah. Eddie has Sarah's phone, and maybe. That's too much information. All right. Transporter, have a nice flight. All right, we're up, up, and away. A little bit overcast today. Things are looking a little dark down below us. Hopefully, we don't run into weather. We'll check the radar shortly. Yeah, I'm going to be doing some uh, A320 flying again pretty soon. Okay, great. We are on course, folks. All right, well, again, sit back, enjoy, and uh, hit the wiki here in a minute. I did Detroit yesterday, heading back in that direction, kind of.
I wonder if we're going to pass those, those nuclear towers. They should be right out there. Again, we've got some clouds, but hopefully that's just isolated to this area and we'll break clear of them here shortly. Right. So these are some of my first real, uh, well, in the simulator, my first cross countries. So I've been limiting most of my flying just to Colorado while uh, training for the first couple of years. And I really enjoy, enjoy flying there and flying around the mountains. And uh, so now I'm letting the jobs take me wherever they may and getting the cross country hours in. Somebody wanted to know how many hours I'd put in yesterday, so I put that up on the cover art uh, for today's show. 1,116 hours of flying so far. It's like 42 days or something like that worth of flying. Yeah. Sounds more impressive as 1,000 hours. That's like, well, I've been flying for a month. A little over a month. That'd be like, I, I've been flying for a month straight. <laughs> well, maybe Sarah Adams is, uh, you're on a phone. Maybe Sarah Adams won't mind if you, uh, <laughs> are, are you, uh, won't mind if you subscribe to me. Put her name up on my front page. is a deep hole in the ground. Wow. They're mining for unobtainium. I'm really into conspiracy theories. This is probably an ancient complex that they've discovered under the guise of a mild-mannered sanding operation. It blows my mind that there are ancient ruins everywhere but the United States, right? That makes no sense whatsoever. And they're like, well, you've got some Indian mounds here. Come on. Come on. You mean to tell me there's ancient ruins and temple complexes and pyramids everywhere in the world? But the United States. That makes no sense to me whatsoever. They're like, nah, let's not go there. All that great abundant land. When we've gone everywhere else in the world. It makes no sense to me. You do hear stories all the time like, well, the Smithsonian found this uh, ancient Egyptian ruins inside the Grand Canyon. And uh, underneath northern New York, there's 12,000 miles of underground cities and you know, that's more believable. Twelve feet down under the ground, we found ancient cities in North America. Yeah, okay. Where's our pyramids? Because we've 
we've got to have some good ones. I mean, even China has pyramids. Yeah, right? Thanks, here we go over our first stretch of water. Is that a, a what is that? like is that an airport on the water? What is that? Just some roads in the middle of the water. That's interesting. Hey, thanks for the like. I really appreciate it. Every single one helps tremendously. And it keeps the wife from yelling at me. What are you doing? Uh, well, I'm live streaming. Did you get any followers or subscribers? Well, no, not really. Uh, what if I tell her that, well, I got one and I got a subscription? Well, that's great, honey. Keep at it. <laughs> okay. So... You're saving a life here with those likes and subscribes. If I ever suddenly just stop making my live streams or doing my live streams, you know a bowling pin, a, a bowling pin, a rolling pin was involved. Bowling pin. Yeah, she's a professional bowler. I can't believe I said that. A rolling pin. He's definitely more of a baker than a bowler. I don't think we've been bowling together since high school, and that's really sad to admit. Maybe when the kids were young. I don't recall. Well, let me raise my cup here, my mug of coffee that Captain Eddie, who's flying from uh, L.A. to Hawaii in an A320neo. Hope the weather's fair for you and everything goes completely normal. That's one of the big reasons why I wanted to get the, um, the pretzel app to have music. Because when you do these long flights, especially in an, in an Airbus or an airliner, unless it's daytime, there isn't a whole lot for people to see. And up at 30,000 feet, even less for people to see. So having some music really helps. I would love to be able to show YouTube movies and videos and other things while I'm flying. But you know how they are. They haven't come around to it yet. And they're all very prohibitive about using any other content. But I'm surprised that they weren't one of the first to say, hey, you know, we've got all these assets. Let's uh, let's try to make some, uh, some radio stations or some content people can use in their live streams to really uh, help them out. Especially those poor flight simulators, guys. <laughs> Their stuff is so dry. They really need some movies and music. And I don't have the uh, engine noise up after a while. It just uh, grates on me. So we're going to role play. It. We have one of those fancy new electric planes. And it doesn't make much noise. But after a thousand hours of hearing constant engine noise in your head... Um, it kind of is there all the time, sometimes. Just the constant drone of the engines. Totally get why they wear the headphones. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're having a great Sunday. Kenny is here, and we are flying to New York. Buffalo, and then um, at the end, there might be some time left over. This is kind of kind of a long flight. 
but I would really like to check out Niagara Falls. And if we don't, I'll get to it tomorrow. We'll just uh, set that as the title, and we'll just hover around Niagara Falls for a little while. You still have 1,816.59 nautical miles to go far out. To whoever just tuned in, I'm trying to, uh, it's, it's definitely working. See the, uh, at the bottom there where it says recent subscriber, it takes a little while for it to kick in, but it is kicking in. So if you would like to see your name there for possibly later in this live stream or tomorrow's live stream, I don't know how long it takes it to actually update. I thought it would be instant, but this didn't show up for a while until uh, I turned it on this morning. And I'm also taking the... Um, recent subscriber names and, and putting it on the, the cover art now of each episode whoever is the latest subscriber so you'll be forever remembered on a piece of YouTube cover art so Captain Eddie and I are both flying today what are you doing to the new person who's tuned in. I understand if you're nervous and don't want to say hi in the chat. But if you're not, let us know what you're doing today. Are you a pilot? Do you fly? Do you fly in the simulator? Hey, Eddie, uh, have you heard about Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 already getting ready to come out? Or they're working on that now? Time flies. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm excited about getting a new computer for it. So I picked this up to do career stuff, and that's basically what's going to be at the heart of uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. They're, it's going to be heavily oriented around um, careers, aviation career activities. Pele Island, nice. Good, I thought we were gonna be further out over the water. This isn't so bad, as long as I can see the land. I have just a unreasonable, unreasonable fear of flying over water without floats. And I wonder too, why, I, why the airline industry decided that, hey, you know, Let's do international flights with planes that have no way to land on the water in case something goes terribly wrong. Wouldn't have been my decision. Like, you're crazy. Well, we have these fancy flotation devices. What? Come on. Put some pontoons on it. Put the weights. Or I don't care. I would love to see it. An A, uh, well, you can't really do it in A320. Can't really do the international flights, but it would be great for, uh, you know, 747 giant pontoons. We're gonna make an emergency landing, folks, but don't worry about it. We have a bunch of fishing gear in the back and some uh, some inflatable some inflatable rafts. So we're gonna make this landing here in the middle of the ocean, uh, nice and smooth and. Um, then we're going to go fishing. By the way, this is a smoker-friendly flight. If you are, you smoke if you got them. And again, and, uh, make yourself at home. You are the VIPs, always. And the choice of seating is yours. And... Uh, you just have to use your imagination that there's a well-stocked bar with everything that you would want in the back. I would love to be able to customize interiors uh, easily. 
<laughs> kind of like the, the Sims. They have spoiled me. Their uh, ability to just build and drop chairs. I would love to be able to do that with the inside of these planes. Just yank the chairs out. I want some, uh, some custom couches on the side. I want some lighting, LED lighting. We want a couple of video screens and some game stuff for people. Maybe a little, maybe a little bed in the back and that bar. Definitely want to have that bar. And you're right behind this panel right here. Yeah, these seats are, they're just too formal. Well, we are making good time. Microsoft needs crash physics, says Captain Eddie. You know, I was thinking about that recently. Yeah, and it doesn't. Um, yeah, you're right. You don't see the wings shear off. Um, I, can, I can't remember if it was this or X-Plane. I think it's X-Plane, where your flaps, if you overspeed, they'll shear right off. But you're right. There are no uh, crash physics, and to show... The actual damage that you do to these things who knows I mean um, it'll eventually they'll eventually do it those folks at a sob are mad genius and if not all the third-party developers that have been helping out create amazing content for Microsoft flight simulator just blow what my mind but the flight simulator community has always been that way as far as I can remember the very first time I ever started getting involved with uh, flight simulation and seeing what the flight community does. They've always, always been heavily active creating mods, creating other planes, creating everything. That's so funny. We're flying a straight line, but we seem to be weaving all over the place. Right? In the, uh, look at the, look, look at our, our course. It's just a straight line. You zoom in a little. And our plane is just like, I don't know, I kind of kind of wanted to go over here. It could be wind, but only a four knot wind doesn't make much sense. But as long as the plane keeps going in the right direction. Get back on track there, buddy. All right. Now, if you could just follow the straight line for our viewers, that'd be great. Yes, ma'am. What time is it? It is 34 minutes after the hour, and that means we missed the 20 minute mark after the hour. I like to commemorate that with the quick little. Smoke break. Now I know some of you were thinking, well, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be partaking while you're flying. You'd be absolutely sober and 100% in control of your faculties. And I agree. And I agree. And if I was doing this in the real world, yeah, it'd be a lot different. But <laughs> it's Sunday, and we're in the simulator. And uh, smoke if you got them. I do have a Discord because they said you need to have a Discord, but I don't really know how to use it. But everybody said, hey, are you a live streamer or are you a chump? Uh, hmm. uh, chump? Well, you need a, you need a uh, Discord channel, even if you don't know how to use it. All right, I'll get a Discord channel, even if I don't know how to use it. So I do have one, and the link is in the description. Also, if you are doing your own live streams, Captain Eddie, and um, anybody else who might be watching at the moment, hello, by the way, if you need YouTube safe music for your live stream, um, 
go to the link in my description or type in pretzel rocks and you will find this pretzel and all of these uh, all these artists that they use all they're all signed the song trader i guess that is the owner of the company the owning company and so yeah it's not going to be anything you've ever heard before it's all music that's that they've created but look at all these channels jazz piano country classic rock classical disco electro swing funk emo epic house grooves hype bangers hype bass love bug lo-fi latin pop metal polka polka punk spooky synth wave techno all the way down to yacht rock and the music is fantastic i think i've heard maybe one track i've been starting to hear repeats now and you hear the after a while you're like yeah i don't really care for this one but 99 percent of the music that i'm hearing wow you people are fantastic so yeah if you need music boy the plane is all over maybe they're microbursts i don't know but did you, did you just see that the plane just kind of lurched around there got some nice um wind towers here we have quite a few in colorado yep planes weaving and bobbing like a box of Let me go in and do another like direct two and see if we can straighten the autopilot out. Hey buff, enter, enter. Trying to reestablish it in its brain. Captain Eddie, are you using a, um, are you using just, I'm just using a joystick, but are you using a, a fancy rig? Do you have a flight rig? I thought about getting some, uh, flight rigs. These people that build the home cockpits with all the buttons and switches, everybody asks me that all the time. Do you have all the, the buttons and switches? And I'm like, no, I, but I know how it all works. I know where everything's at. I'm poor, so no, but, but I know how everything works. But also like, you need to have better, uh, starting stuff like uh, stream starting soon. Y you know, are you a live streamer? Or are you a chump? Uh, yeah. So I got some new uh, stream starting soon stuff. And I have one for... Be right back. I had to try to find one. I actually had to modify this one. I'm just learning how to do that. Because normally they put the be right back and starting soon right in the middle of the screen. It's like, well, I want to show people what... You know something of what's going on and I've got one for now for um, hey the stream has ended I don't want to be a chump anymore and then I've got an there I can do it that way and put the, um, the stream in because sometimes when we're taking a break You know, I'm not going to stop flying. We're just running off for a minute to use the restroom or something. Hey, thank you for tuning in. Please hit the like and subscribe. And if you hit the subscribe, you you might show up 
down at the bottom there where it says uh, recent subscriber. Whoever's the most recent subscriber, I will start putting you on the cover art for the day. I uh, just was uh, given like super chat and emojis and I'm not really sure how all that works. Um, but feel free if you're inclined to want to do the super chat thing or become a sponsor. Looks like the planes. I'm going to chalk it up to aliens and they have radioactive stuff in the ground around here. And it's causing subspace anomalies, Captain, with the, uh, causing problems with the Garmin. Because again, we, we, uh, the plane does not want to stay on the path. So we could have some computer problem. Uh, it could be some strange wind. But it's only, I only see six knots blowing uh, a little out of the west, northwest. And, and there's no way the plane should be doing this kind of activity at all. You know what we'll do then? We'll just put it into uh, a core setting of 80, 82 about. What is that? And we'll just use heading hold because it is taking time. All these little Stevie Wonder swaying back and forth. It's eating up time. So you set your heading, you get your bug, and set the heading. And then on your autopilot, just click on heading and it'll take it out of nav. And then it will turn and just follow that course heading. They had some artists on last night that try to sound like ACDC and Pink Floyd and Black Sabbath. And they have all done fantastic jobs there's even some people on here that sound like the talking heads and that's far out all right so we're on heading hold go into a, into a little bit of mist here and i apologize now the drone has a tendency to drift over time so if I leave it and just leave it to its own devices without correcting it it's eventually gonna do that to us it'll but it does it so slow but the drone is constantly turning and I have, I have not figured out why you know why or how to prevent the drone from rotating during flight and then please let me know Oh, also, let me get my map. I haven't opened our map today. So with uh, NeoFly, you get, you can open it up in here. And you get this little feature that pops up, Sky for Sim. And it gives you this little, uh, kind of like a pad. And there's multiple functions. It links together your career mode in NeoFly. And you can um, check your weights and do different things. But it's got this, this neat, neat, neat map suite. All right. So we can tell where we're at and, you know, can see street names, etc., etc. All right. But you can also put this. I can get it to pop up again. Says it's already running again. Yes, you're running. Well, let me close it out, close it, and open it up again. Once you've minimized it, it's a it doesn't want to just pop right back out. 
but once it does come up you have the option <laughs> that was the wrong thing a derp wait close my close my music kidding me it's not running it says another instance is running so the point I'm trying to get to here is you can pop it up pop it out into its own window and once you have it in its own window it's easy to create a new scene and show it there in full screen. Well, let me break it back out again. Here it comes. Start the server and open Sky for some pad in your web browser. Pop that out. There. That's what I'm talking about. So normally I have been normally I've just been uh, putting it up on the screen and like hey check it out I've got this cool little map here for you to follow along with and then people have to squint it's so tiny on some screens and if you're on watching on a phone or something even smaller yeah well isn't that cool well, I can't read anything So now I can just here we go. So if you live around here, it's even it's even more exciting, I would imagine. Put some bird. All right. So then other things that it can do. Different overlays. We've got a terrain. Just a, a standard like car map, a road map. Well, sort of. We're not getting the road names at that height. No, there we go. No. Got to be pretty far zoomed in. One train, two decimal, two five, Kenya is two one. Cleveland Center, Kenya is two one three thousand feet. I guess dark mode. Kenya two one, Cleveland Center altimeter three zero decimal zero four. Continue as planned. There are also airplane filters, right? So show aircraft, show aircraft info, flight plan, airports, show airports, show VORs, that's nice. And then points of interest. So there's that so you do get that uh, you should be getting that free in if you get neo fly 
Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, I'm a little late, too. Uh, in seeing in the in the chat, Clinton Cook popped in. How are you today, sir? Captain. Clinton Cook has uh, flown in a real simulator. A real um, airliner simulator. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's a... very warm here in Colorado today. And yesterday I was saying, I really don't like flying over water, and then we got this long stretch over the water today. I don't know how much uh, everybody follows uh, air, air, airplane news and things like that, um, but something that's come up recently in the headlines, and I think it's amazing, is that Garmin, pardon me, I'm stuffy, Garmin has released an emergency landing system that you can get for your airplanes now in the real world, and should something go terribly wrong, like you have the pilot has a heart attack, they uh, install this big red emergency button somewhere in your plane, usually where other people can see it in case you suddenly have a stroke, can't fly the plane anymore, and all they have to do is push a button, and it will send out all the appropriate messages to air traffic control in the area and let them know what's going on. It will find the nearest airport and start calculating the, the flight down to the ground and it will land the plane. Now, right now, they're only marketing it as a an autopilot emergency only feature and um... I can't wait till that just becomes a normal thing. There are people out there creating GPS units that you can talk to. So the automation in you know what these uh, the real world money bag pilots have is, is pretty mind blowing. You know anyway to have that as a standard piece of equipment like yeah just. Go to Buffalo, land the plane. Yeah, yeah. I know it takes the experience away from the pilot, and what pilots need is more hands-on than less hands-on as we move forward. But once you've learned everything, it's so wonderful to be able to use, to be instrument rated and know how to use all of this stuff. Uh, so you, you can kick back and enjoy your company and just monitor things I don't think it's cheating in any way I think that's that's fantastic and if the thing wants to land itself eight ninety percent of the time it will probably do better than me anyway I'm not totally crappy at landings I used to be bad I almost quit I almost quit wanting to learn anything about flying because for the first two years in the simulator I couldn't really stick a landing and then because of that I developed a psychological baggage 
and uh, you know, convincing myself you can't do it, you can't do it. So a news report from Clinton in the chat room, who's down in um, down in Africa, I'm trying to remember where you said, "Hey, uh, can't believe my memory's going out the window like that, Clinton." It was only last night, Cape Town, and he's saying in Africa where he's at. It's freezing cold and wet. And here it is. Cape Town. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, and Clinton says, just like airbags were an option in the beginning, the auto land system will become the norm like transponders. Yes, sir. I do believe that as well. I do believe that as well. Um, they said uh, AOPA and other people who... Pay attention and write all the stuff up on airline safety. Say that the biggest problem today is that most pilots don't spend enough time in the simulator. Everything is always, you know, perfect conditions and they don't spend enough time dealing with random failures and or just the things that happen unexpectedly. You know weather or whatever and they said because of that a lot of these pilots they don't know how to react and that's the worst thing I remember before I knew anything about instrument flying when things would go wrong I would panic and freeze up because I don't I didn't know how to use all of this information in front of me to just calm down you're fine you'll figure this out and uh and deal with it And it's panic, it's terror when you when you don't know. So if you've ever experienced that and you're not yet instrument rated, just open up YouTube and start learning as much as you can. And it's all there. Everything you ever would ever want to know about flying and learning how to fly and taking your tests and everything. Everything. Somebody has made a video on it. Some of them are mine. I wanted to demonstrate that I that I know what I'm doing, and so for the first year of live streaming, most of my videos are training videos. You know, from a noob to other noobs, because you know I was still just learning, but I would find other people's videos a little too hard sometimes to understand. So I would want to make my own. But look, here's the way I understand it, and hope, hope it helps. But everything that you would want to learn, you can learn. And um, I don't want you to have that that feeling of fear anymore. I can remember first learning to fly in the simulator and doing no visibility conditions. And you can't see anything out of your win your your windows here. Nothing. And you don't know what way is up. And it's terrifying. And um, then if you haven't flight planned properly and you don't know which direction you're going, the elevation ahead is is there a mountain coming up in front of me? Um, you know. Clinton says, there are a few small planes with it installed already. Yes. The Piper M600 has the Halo system already installed. Um, the basics first. Halo, I'm trying to recall, but I think Halo is one of those ones that does active... Doesn't it do active out to like 10 miles? Let me look it up here. Instead of just guessing. Halo for airplanes. 
Hyper Aircraft Halo Safety System Certified on the M600. Thank you, sir. The Halo uh, Safety System with Garmin Auto Land. Okay, so it's a similar system. Uh, I know that, that somebody's been advertising, and again, I didn't mark it down. Somebody's advertising another system that you can get for your plane that is like super active scanning of everything out it's 10 miles or further around you. Both constantly actively scanning and sending information back. What an exciting time. My, my dad uh, caught in a situation when he was only, um, and he quit. He quit flying. He lost his nerve. He got caught in a uh, no visibility situation and had to be talked down by air traffic control. One, he shouldn't have been up there, period. So you can imagine the uh, beating down that they gave him. Like, look, you know, your visual flight rules license doesn't allow you to fly in the crap you were flying into. You fail to flight plan properly and contact the weather services. You know, you shouldn't be flying this late at night. Uh, just everything. He did, you know, I'm, <laughs> it sucks talking about my dad this way. Um, but he did everything wrong. But the men of the 70s were a lot more cavalier. You know, we can do anything. Heck, I'm going to go learn how to uh, break horses today and be in the rodeo. And they just go do it. I remember when he just said, I'm going to go learn how to, I'm going to go learn how to fly. He just went out and did it. Flying in no time. A different breed of men, I think. <laughs> but ones that will do things the wrong way. Anyway, it bit him in the butt and he quit. He lost his nerve and it terrified him so bad. And then, yeah, it, to be perfectly honest, they probably took his license. I don't. I, I never really, I never really found out. You know, I was off in high school and had girls on the brain. Um, but once that happened and I started getting into the simulator myself, I'm like, I'm going to learn instruments and eventually teach my dad how to do this. He was no longer interested and on his way off this planet. By the time uh, we were able to hook up and spend some time together and I could show him Microsoft Flight Simulator 10. And he was very impressed with it, but he didn't even want to fly it. He, you know, I'm like, come on, sit down and just fly a landing pattern, you know. And he eventually sat down and played with it for a little bit. But he was really, you know, he had other things like dying on his mind, and I understand. But I was so happy to tell him, look, I'm, I'm learning all this stuff now. I understand all how all the instruments work, and so. No, it's not real, and I'm not out there really doing it, but I know how to do it. So I was able to demonstrate that to him, and he was pretty happy. I was happy to do that before he went. But that was the main reason why I absolutely wanted to learn everything about the instruments. I'm sorry this job isn't the most... Um, amazing to look at normally I usually have the, the wiki out too and I'm talking about things that are coming up or but there's not much in between here and there We are doing really well, time-wise. Yesterday was a long flight. Yesterday, we started here in Green Bay. Get rid of the airports. Now they're starting to bung things up and get in the way. We started out yesterday here in Green Bay, 
and we flew all the way down the edge here at Sheboygan. We learned about Sheboygan yesterday, Chair City. Now we it, it, they used to make so many chairs that they called Sheboygan Chair City. So when you're out shopping for chairs now, are these are any of these from Sheboygan? You don't have any Sheboygan chairs? What kind of a place is this? Blue down and we checked out Milwaukee. And we flew just around Chicago on the outer edge and then made our way back in to downtown and then started going this way. Look what else we found yesterday in our searches. And we didn't go see it, but I found out about it through reading uh, about these places. But we were already way over here. But anyway, near Chicago, and then the place called... Da -da. There's the, the Fermi Labs Particle Accelerator. Now I'm trying to find it. Should have uh, made a mark. Oh, come on. Yeah, and it doesn't show all the names until you zoom right down. Oh, darn it. Well, anyway, there is a, a particle accelerator facility that we checked out yesterday. The Fermi Labs. There it is. Look at this. So we have our own little CERN here in the United States of America and people don't really talk about it too much. But that's what this is. This is the inner, the outer ring, outer ring road. Fermi National Accelerator Lab. Cooling pond. Yeah, things must get pretty hot moving it near the speed of light. All right. Back to where we were. So, yeah, we made our way all the way around down there. And we ended up here near Ann Arbor and to drop off our VIPs. And then I took us and we did a spin around Detroit. And then I went back and landed. Today we're starting out right over here. And we're doing a pretty much straight line all the way to Buffalo. In the Niagara Falls, here's the Niagara River. We follow this up. Niagara Falls. Where Nikola Tesla created his first power plant. In the United States. Okay. So I would really like to see that and see what it looks like in the simulator. We're going to be doing that at the end of our flight here. Okay. And drone drift. They do have freelance mode if you're like, well, uh, I'm just doing cargo because so far this is the the biggest plane other than going to jet uh, an airliner or a small jet for cargo. This is probably the best thing you can do is get up into the caravan uh, because you're making 
twenty thousand dollars sometimes even on just super short runs the money is great with the caravan but if you get bored and you want to fly something else anything that you have loaded you can You can go to the freelance panel. It says it's instant action. In this mode, you can jump in any aircraft, even if you don't own it in NeoFly, and fly jobs and missions straight away. The rewards will be scaled back as there's no cost involved, but all earnings will go to your uh, main career balance. You can also find the freelance jobs application on Sky for Sim which I told you you get free with Neo Fly and you can open it up in here. And go to freelance. So whatever you plan uh, you load in in Microsoft Flight Simulator there will be a type of job for you. Uh, I don't know about the military ones yet. I haven't seen any military ones pop up. I know that there are supposed to be military missions in here under jobs because these are all the filters for job types that you can get. That's what we have today, cargo. There's sensitive car cargo, express cargo with a time limit. You've gotta haul and get there. Illicit cargo. Passengers. That was yesterday. We had a VIP. Um, passenger tourist. It will look at all the tourist locations in Microsoft Flight Simulator in the area that you're flying, and it will generate a tourist flight for you a secret passenger I haven't had one of those yet emergencies one of the things about Neofly is it that they advertise anyway is that it will take any emergency that's going on in your area and turn it into an event in in this career thing I haven't seen it happen yet search and rescue uh, it wasn't working during pre-release for me and I haven't tried again all right, also, um, fire. I don't know which planes you need for fire yet, but I'm looking forward to trying some. Also, I've tried doing parachutes, but I don't think this is the right, I would think this is the perfect plane for parachuting. But maybe it was just a pre-release thing. I haven't tried it again. Uh, also, something that I couldn't figure out in pre-release, and I'll need to try it again, is an advertising you, you get an advertising plane with a tow hook on it and you're supposed to go up into the air and hook onto a banner and then fly out to a destination point, do a couple of circles and get paid. Military interception. Um, airliner passenger. Airliner humanitarian. So those are all the different job types. Um, you do have to qualify, which I haven't done, probably, and that's why some of these aren't active yet. There are tests that you have to take. Your qualification tests. And I've done A and C and passed those, and I guess I didn't pass my B, but I... Uh, then there's category D, E, F, H, N, 5 on M. So A is like little Cessnas or Cubs. Uh, B is twin propeller. These are heavier. There's another twin propeller. Uh, there's Airbus. So you can qualify with these. And once you do these...
then I'm sure all the other jobs will open up for you. So yeah, I've been kind of lazy. I just wanted to get to the money making and I'm probably going to make a lot more, would make a lot more if I would do these. Don't be lazy like me. But definitely have to do an A320 qualification soon. There's the Beechcraft. 747. I have not got the helicopters to work. Clinton, to cool the magnets down? Yeah, absolutely. Something. Ugh. I can't. They're like, well, you're just a crappy helicopter pilot. No, come on. Come on. I can't. Something is buggy with my controller. I'll turn on all the assists. I'll follow every rule, uh, every video, and I follow everything everybody says. Go in and clear everything out and start over and create a custom helicopter profile. And I try, and it does not like my joystick. As soon as I touch it, it loses its mind. So I'm probably due for or, uh, another joystick. Because I can't. I can't get it to work. In the past, I've had no problems with certain helicopters. So I don't know what the problem is. Uh, and these are... Okay, here's military planes. The F-A-18 uh, Super Hornet. So far out. It's a cool plane. I've learned how to fly most all of the... the uh, military ones provided that Microsoft has provided us and I picked up the F-35 from a third-party developer and it's it's wonderful the F-35 is one of the greatest things in the world to fly and if you haven't picked it up and you like military craft you're gonna be in love because if you've ever worked your way up through general aviation planes, small planes, and then worked your way up into the jets and then into airliners, um, they talk about the term uh, translating up. So what you learn in a Cessna, the cockpit, the layout, you know, how things work, what things are labeled, that when you get into other types of aircraft, it's pretty much the same. I mean, you know. And you can eventually just sit there and figure it out. But then when you make your first move into military aircraft. Uh, nothing's where it should be. Nothing where is labeled. Everything's labeled differently. Everything operates differently. And that might be by design. Because you don't want just every Yahoo being able to hop into a military aircraft and go do something. But I was hoping by the time I got to the F-22, the Raptor, it would all be easy, easy to use. And uh, even up to the, uh, the F-18. And... I understand why they make them the way that they do, but I still don't find them intuitive in any way. And it doesn't, things don't translate up. So you have to learn everything. And I think that's a real drag. I in before I got my hands on the 35, I would say, hey, that, what's the point of that? You spend your whole life learning everything you can about flying, and then you're going to continue spending the rest of your life. You're never going to stop learning and then you put somebody into a plane that where it's life and death on the line and you've got to think about all this other stuff god bless the people in the military the men and women who are that amazing but then you finally get into the 35 and you're like ah ah i understand everything i'm seeing and it's so uh, minimal. There's so there's nothing to the cockpit. Just a couple of switches to get things started. 
probably the same amount that you see right there. You're just going to turn on a couple of things and hit start. And then everything is glass cockpit. And it's all touch screen. And everything is labeled properly. <laughs> and then the joy of it, it is like flying a UFO. Especially the B variant with the Stovall. The, uh, it can turn its, it can rotate its engines underneath itself to 90 degrees. And you can go into hover mode. If you're coming in really fast too, and you slow down and get the plane leveled out and slowed down, even before you come into the ground, you can throw it into its half Stovall mode where the engines rotate to about 60 degrees and you just glide down like you're a bird. You can throw the nose all the way straight to the ground and she's not gonna just go diving into the ground and crash. She just floats. And then as you get closer to the ground, raise the nose level out, kick it into hover mode. And while in hover mode, you could do the same thing. You can turn it off, drop the nose, and immediately get going. So you're going to love it. Every article I read on it, every pilot that's flying it, they're like, this is the dream come true. This is the plane that we have wanted our whole life, right? I can't wait for more of that kind of design to now come down into general aviation. So everything we talked about, Clinton and Eddie and everybody else out there, what we've been talking about today, starting with the Garmin emergency autopilot landing system not being standard in all planes yet but eventually it will be same with all the other automation and seeing it come down from the military coming going coming into general aviation we live in amazing times these little mini jets that people are flying around to like the honda jet <laughs> So posh. Well, I'm glad we had something to talk about. But we've been making a great time, and as I glance down here, we are doing really, really well. Is it? Hey, it's uh, 24 minutes after the hour, and it's time for a smoke break. Um, I'm going to turn up the music for, I don't know, a minute or two, and uh, get our smoke on. Uh, so please, feel free. Uh, you can open windows if you want, but um, if you if you like to partake, then please do. Now's the time.
That wasn't the softest landing I've seen. Transporter from dispatch. Clear the runway and taxi to parking. Transporter. Cargo unloading in progress. Stand by, pilot. Transporter from dispatch. Everything seems okay. The customer looks happy. Mission ended. Start your engine.
Have a nice flight. Just to remind you, we're not paying you for this one.
The stars at night we both can see. Will I find?
Icon X-Ray Golf Sierra. Icon Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra is type Icon, two miles southeast of November Kilo 80800 feet. Request flight following. Icon Alpha Sierra X-Ray Golf Sierra on a follow approach. Squawk 7733. Squawk 
77 Tree Tree Icon X-Ray Golf Sierra. Icon X-Ray Golf Sierra radar contact one mile south of November Kilo 801,200 feet. Altimeter Tree Zero Decimal Zero Zero. Roger, Icon X-Ray Golf Sierra. Lord Almighty, I forgot to turn the microphone back on again. Oh, I was just getting ready to go over to Twitter and say, hey, check out this cool live stream I did. And now at the end of the last half, I forgot to turn the microphone back on. And I don't remember where I did it. I'm stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> 